Thank you for coming here. It's a great honor to have you here, Thank Mr. You. Roger Wilkins. Can you briefly introduce yourself to our viewer? Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks for the um, thanks for the welcome and my first time in Korea. It's mm -hmm. a terrific country. So, but I've only been here 24 hours, so <laughs> I don't know. But um, so I've I've had a long career mainly in the public service, but I've also worked for Citibank. And I've worked too as the president of the Financial Action Task Force in, in Paris, mm -hmm. which is in charge of setting standards yeah. for combating money laundering and terrorism financing around all the countries of the world. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not really a task force because it's been going for 30 years mm -hmm. now. But, uh, wow. but anyway, so I was president from between 2014-15 uh, mm -hmm. and... Um, so that's me, and now I just do, I sit on some boards, mm -hmm. I give advice on various things about finance, but uh, also about um, uh, crypto, mm -hmm. um, so a whole bunch of stuff like that, yeah. Actually, I was gonna ask you what is FATF, but you already, you know, answered. Thank you very much. Well, I can say a little bit more about it because, I mean, you're, it's really um, an interesting organization because the main main part of the FATF mm -hmm. is really the G20. Oh, so G20. there's a group of people that mm -hmm. meet three or four times a year. These are officials, mm -hmm. high officials from different countries, but the G20 countries plus some Europeans, and they meet in Paris and they make the standards for the rest of the mm -hmm. world in relation to money laundering and terrorism. In other words, they say all the countries should put these laws in place, mm -hmm. all the countries should regulate blockchain or mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies in this way, and then the countries have to do that. Yes. And um, if they don't do it, then they are, they, they receive some, some sanctions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they could be excluded from trading US mm -hmm. dollars or they could be put on a blacklist or maybe excluded uh -huh. from finance arrangements or banking. So there is quite a lot of mm -hmm. sanctions available, but that's what the FATF mm -hmm. does actually. And it also assesses each country. Mm -hmm. So every country should follow the recommendation of FATF. Yes. It's like, it's like word law or something. It's yes. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, it's like an, a bit mm -hmm. like an international mm -hmm. treaty, a bit mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, uh, this might come a little bit straightforward, but this is the question that I'm most curious about. Um, it could be anything: funds, assets, goods. There is very wide definition chosen within FATF for any value transfer. You need to pop in the name. I mean, to be sure, they want to collect data in advance, even though they can get criminals' information after such bad things happen. Do you think it is the right way to treat or regulate this new industry? Um, that's a good question, actually. I mean, and there are probably different ways mm -hmm. of creating at least a level playing mm -hmm. field with the conventional financial mm -hmm. sector, like banks and other types of financial instruments. Uh, whether it's the right way to regulate uh, the financial sectors, mm -hmm. including the cryptocurrency mm -hmm. sector, is a good question. I mean, it, it may be that um, the technology has moved quicker and mm -hmm. further uh -huh. and that some of these rules mm -hmm. and recommendations that we have maybe aren't so relevant to crypto. Mm -hmm. When I was the president, we were looking at mobile banking, which mm -hmm. is not anything to do with cryptocurrency, but some of the recommendations that you use for the old fashioned mm -hmm. style of banking don't really work for mobile banking. Mm -hmm. Mobile banking is a completely different. Mm -hmm. And the same is probably true of using cryptocurrency. So do I think it's the best way? Um, I'm not sure, actually. I think, I think we'll see what happens uh, as a result of these new recommendations. But, but the idea is that, you know, that uh, organizations like banks mm -hmm. and exchanges are going to have to become part of the effort mm -hmm. to stamp out money laundering and terrorism financing by 
interrogating their customers and making sure that they understand uh, what the transaction is and they don't allow suspicious transactions to take place. So, you know, maybe digital currency exchanges that don't, or cryptocurrency mm -hmm. exchanges don't understand this, but they're going to become the front line for law enforcement, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, in mm -hmm. the same sense, can you tell me the future of crypto and traditional banking sectors? Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to know your opinion yeah. on crypto and banking. Yeah, there are, you're probably right. I mean, there are a number of scenarios. So we've had the, um, we've had the governor of the Bank of England mm -hmm. talking about whether or not the British pound should become a digital currency, mm -hmm. actually. Instead of a physical mm -hmm. currency, it becomes a digital currency. We've had big banks talking about creating their own coin, mm -hmm. you know, instead yeah. of, so you could have city coin mm -hmm. or HSBC mm -hmm. coin or whatever, which would go back to the days when the banks used to actually print mm -hmm. money. And then we've got things like Libra, which is yeah. a major and much wider, um, I guess, uh, crypto firm than any that we've seen mm -hmm. so far. It is a major, it has the capacity to um, reach millions mm -hmm. and millions of people who have Facebook mm -hmm. accounts, etc. And so it might alter the market, it might make cryptocurrency more mainstream um, and maybe even a competitor to banks. But there are some big issues that governments mm -hmm. worry about with cryptocurrency. One is money laundering. Mm -hmm. So this conference is all about mm -hmm. money laundering and we, that's what the FATF is about. But the others are consumer protection. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's a lot of volatility in the market and not much transparency. People don't really understand often what they're buying or what they're getting into. And then there's the whole issue of prudential or the supply of money and economics and basically what the reserve banks are interested in is keeping a stable supply of money and being able to sort of stop inflation and uh, work against possible recessions by so if if crypto becomes a significant currency mm -hmm. in the world then the governments lose control of that they don't have a, any longer have that lever over monetary policy so they'll have to change Mm -hmm. The way they do monetary policy, they'll have to go into the market and buy Bitcoin or mm -hmm. Libra or something. Or so, how do they? How do you do monetary policy in a world in which you don't actually own the currency and you don't print the currency and the currency is pri a private currency? That's quite a difficult issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very complex, but I do think um, it's quite exciting as well, actually, because it means that. Uh, um, you can have competition between currencies. Mm -hmm. It means uh, you can probably get around things like some of the transaction costs on cross-border mm -hmm. trading, etc. It means that you can get a truly global currency to some extent. A foreign exchange becomes much more easy. And yeah, uh, yeah so it's it could transform mm -hmm. the way in which we sort of Pay, pay money, mm -hmm. pay taxes, do business. So it's, it's a very rich number yeah. of uh, possibilities, actually. It's difficult, difficult to predict, though. It's all speculation, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you personally have experience on invest in Bitcoin or some other cryptocurrencies? No, I don't, but, <laughs> but my, um, my partner does. So oh, really? I, yeah, so, mm -hmm. so a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, but I've stayed, I've stayed out of it uh, uh -huh. for some reasons, you know, it's sort of, so I don't have a conflict uh, of interest. Yeah, yeah, I uh -huh. need to be, uh, I, I still that. chair mm. some boards on mm. law enforcement yeah. and things like that. So mm -hmm. it's better if you don't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Though they offered to pay me once in Bitcoin oh, really? when oh. I was doing some work mm -hmm. for cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. but I said, no, 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 mm. I'm just, you can pay me in dollars actually. Dollars. <laughs> So my last question is, you know, there are many critics that Korean government, I think it's not just the problems of Korean government, but Korean government is lagging behind the regulation or innovation. There are many critics, you know, around the world. 
I don't, I don't think people, governments need to rush at mm. this, actually. I think you take your time a bit and see mm. what the best way of making the law is. I mean, sometimes you can get into trouble because you rush mm -hmm. in and regulate this stuff and then you discover that you've done a stupid thing, actually. So I, I don't know. I think provided they're thinking this through, mm. Um, deliberately thinking it through and thinking of the pros and cons and I don't think it's necessarily a problem actually I mean it's it's not illegal in Korea is it it's, it's a little bit complicated but it's not regulated Blockchain is okay but cryptocurrency is not okay so in Australia for example mm -hmm. we did have a situation where uh, Bitcoin mm -hmm. was treated as a commodity uh -huh. which meant that it got taxed twice mm -hmm. um, mm. because it was a, like a goods and services, mm -hmm. so maybe it was a, a GST mm -hmm. tax, but then it got taxed again if there was a capital gain in this as well. So it was, so in Australia we decided, we said for the tax purposes, Bitcoin is a currency. Mm -hmm. So they were happy about that. Mm -hmm. um, but the, we said in return for that, we're going to require registration of crypto mm -hmm. exchanges and you're going to have to comply mm. with some of these mm -hmm. uh, KYC, yeah. customer due mm -hmm. diligence requirements. So that's something Korea could do, I think. And in fact, now that the FATF has published these yeah. recommendations mm -hmm. and guidelines, they're going to have to do it. Yes. So, so mm -hmm. but you know, I don't think, provided they're working towards that. I don't think they have to do it tomorrow or the next mm. day, but provided they do it in the next mm -hmm. year or so, I think this is probably good enough, actually. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for mm -hmm. your opinion. It changes the nature of cryptocurrency, actually, and it has some good things and bad things. So if you, if you think cryptocurrency is a type of disruptive, type of disruptive mm -hmm. coin that causes trouble for the banks and government, you know, like the libertarians, the original people who started Bitcoin, they had a vision of a world in which you would basically undermine the banks and undermine even government regulation. This would be a new world in which there'd be complete freedom to exchange peer to peer. It would get rid of these institutions, these centralized institutions. Well, forget that. If, if, if the governments start to issue digital currencies or fiat currencies or the big banks or Libra with the backing of a basket of currencies and the backing of um, MasterCard and Visa, theoretically it could include everybody who's got a Facebook account. You know, that's billions of people actually. So it would significantly change cryptocurrency the, the role it plays in society and it would mean that it would be probably Libra would become the size of one of the biggest banks in the world mm. actually if you look at the volume it could possibly trade so then governments have to get quite interested in questions about monetary policy and its effect on economics and things like that but but it's a long way from the traditional, from the original yeah. view, vision of mm -hmm. people who started the Bitcoin. I mean, it would have moved, it's looking much more like a conventional universal currency, actually. Sir, All right. thank you. Okay, <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>